planet because you know if you keep compounding uh, that's what ends up happening and uh, so that's that's the the one of the important takeaways i took from uh, the learnings uh, from buffett and munger is that uh, you know, you don't really need to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. Uh, if if you can if you can double uh, your money every three years, uh, then you know a few doubles starts adding some significant numbers. I mean, if you if you start with a million dollars in thirty years, it becomes a billion. If you start with ten thousand, it becomes ten million. It's just incredible in terms of what happens. And the doubling every three years, uh, you know. My way of thinking of that was that if you buy a stock at less than half of what it's worth and you just sit on it uh, and in two or three years it gets to being what it's worth, uh, lo and behold, you'll have your 20, 30 percent uh, annualized and sometimes you might get it in a year and sometimes you might have mistakes and the blended result of all of that um, ends up uh, being where it is. And... Um, so, uh, so I think I think compounding is um, is a very powerful notion, very much uh, uh, in sync with uh, with the whole Thando framework. And one other thing I wanted to mention is that you know, just in the same kind of uh, mindset of uh, of of Google, is that uh, you know the market gets confused between risk and uncertainty, and it kind of uh, confuses one for the other. And risk and uncertainty are two very different things. And in general, uh, anytime you get to a situation where risk is low, uh, but uncertainty is high, in general, uh, the odds are high that the stock in question or business in question will be mispriced. And it'll probably be underpriced. Um, so that, that combination of low risk and high uncertainty uh, is a great, great combo. And the low risk means that your downside is limited. And, you know, a good way to think about that is, like, for example, um, when, uh, when Bill Gates uh, started Microsoft, you know, people always think about these companies being formed as being highly risky ventures. But if you really analyze it, so when Gates started Microsoft, he did not have a net worth or assets or capital. So... The, the fact that he was taking a high risk, well, there's no capital to lose, so you can't really have risk because of a loss of capital. Um, and if you think about the opportunity cost, so he had not yet finished his undergraduate degree. At that time, with you know the couple of years that he had spent at Harvard, his value in the job market was very low. So if he went out looking for jobs and such, the people would not be willing to pay him that much. And if the venture did not work, so he moves to New Mexico, starts Microsoft. And so if you think about the, the notion that Microsoft doesn't work, well, he goes back to Harvard, finishes an undergraduate degree, and now when he graduates, he's got interesting stuff on his resume, that what he did it at, in New Mexico for a year. So any way you look at it, the startup of Microsoft was almost risk-free. But the uncertainty related to Microsoft was very high. Uh, it could have been that the company failed and whatever little money he had was gone. Or it could be that he could have become the wealthiest human on the planet, which he did. And so it's a very wide range of outcomes uh, that could have happened at that point. And, but the key thing was that uh, the risk was low. And in fact, if you study non-venture-backed startups, uh, Non-venture-backed startups like the Patels uh, do not take risk. Uh, in fact, we repeatedly study businesses. Uh, you know, there's there's more than a million businesses that get started in the United States every year. Less than a thousand of them are venture-backed. Maybe a couple of thousand. So, 99 plus percent of businesses that get formed in the United States are not venture-backed businesses, and most of them follow this low-risk high uncertainty uh, principle when they get going, like the Patels.